Hey guys, what's up? Today I want to talk about standing waves and their properties, but also how we use standing waves to find something that we call harmonic numbers. Okay, so first let's look and define what a standing wave is. When we have a wave that's traveling down a path, what will happen is it will hit a fixed point and we'll call this like a wall. Now, once it hits that wall, we know that waves reflect with an opposite amplitude. So it's going to hit the wall here, but then it is going to bounce back this way. Guys, I apologize. This is the worst standing wave picture I've ever drawn. There's What's going to happen is we are going to have these moments where the rope is traveling from here down to here and then back again. So the particles right here, we know the particles in a transverse wave, they, they travel perpendicular to the motion. So the motion of the wave is down this way and then it's coming back this way. So the motion of the waves is always gonna be up and down. So we have these spots here where the rope looks like it's not moving at all. It has no displacement. The particles here do not move. So we say that these particles here have no displacement. Now with that no displacement, we call these particular spots nodes. For all you Pitch Perfect fans out there, I've got nodes. So these spots are called nodes. So in this particular picture, there are one, two, three, four, there are five nodes. We must remember that nodes include the end spot. So this is a node, we can't forget about that. And also, this is a node right here. Now, the definition of the standing wave and how a wave forms, because this is going to be testable information. This is when a wave reflects with, and these are the things that you need to know right here, the same frequency. So the reflecting wave has to set the same frequency. It has to therefore have the same wavelength. And here is the big one that sometimes students forget. It has to also have the same amplitude. And just as a review, guys, remember, amplitude is the distance from the equilibrium point. This would be the equilibrium point of this wave. And guys, we're going to pretend like I drew this and it had the same amplitude. So this right here is amplitude. But now why that's confusing, why I call this A and sometimes students get confused, is because this region inside, in between the nodes, in between nodes, we have something called antinodes, okay? And that antinode is this whole region in here. So all of this is the antinode. And sometimes they're just gonna call this capital A. See, now that's why we can't get confused with capital A being this antinode and A being the amplitude. So you have to kind of use the words in the question and know what they're particularly asking for. So if I redrew this real quick and made it like a simpler, and guys, drawing these is hard. I, I, they're never gonna really ask you. If anything, they'll just ask you to sketch them kind of like I'm doing right here. But they're most of the time gonna give it to you. So you would see something that looked like N, A, N, A, N, et cetera. All right, so these parts would be labeled A. But now the thing is, they're not gonna give you a value for A. So that's kind of how you can not get it confused with amplitude, because they're not gonna say the antinode is five meters. Like that's, that's not the case. An antinode just describes an area of the standing wave. Okay, so before we go into harmonic, mo uh, harmonic numbers, we have to know how to count the number of nodes on a wave which we can do, no displacement nodes, okay? And we have to know how to count the amount of antinodes. And it's true that N will always be one higher than A. So right now I have four antinodes, I am going to have five nodes. If I had three antinodes, I would have four nodes, etc. So we have to be able to count those in order to find the harmonic number. Okay, so here's a drawing that has three nodes, one, two, three, and it has two antinodes, one, two. So my first question I wanna ask you now as we work into harmonics is, what is the distance in wavelength from node to node? 
So as I go from node to node in terms of wavelength, how do we represent that? Well, we say that the distance is going to be, distance from node to node is going to be equal to one half of lambda. And we are gonna call the length of our standing wave from here to here, L. Now another thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna count and say that there are two antinodes. This information is going to help us. Being able to identify L, because these are the things we're gonna compare when we look at harmonics. We're gonna look at L, we're gonna look at how many A's there are, and we're gonna compare it to the fact that a standing wave from node to node is one half of a wavelength. So this diagram right here, we have a standing wave. It has two nodes, it has one node here, it has an antinode, and it has a node here. And we'll say that it has a length equal to L. Now this right here is the first possible standing wave. I can't create any less standing waves here because we have to have a node and a node. So because this is the first possible standing wave that I can have, I'm gonna call this the first harmonic. But I also know that this is equal to one half of a wavelength. So if I start to represent this in terms of length and wavelength, I can use this to determine, if given L, how long the wavelength of the entire standing wave is. So for example, I would say that L is equal to, and this is where counting up the antinodes is gonna help, because the antinode is gonna be later known as like the harmonic number. So what I'll say is there is one antinode. So I say one antinode, and then I will also say that the picture itself has a one half of a wavelength for that one antinode. One antinode is one half of a wavelength which allows me to then say that the wavelength of this standing wave is equal to two times L. It's really two over one times L. So if given L, let's say for example, L was equal to three meters, I can now say that the wavelength of the standing wave is equal to three times two, which is gonna be six meters. So by looking at the picture, and this becomes pretty easy with the first harmonic, I can set up a situation where if I know L and I know how many antinodes I have, I can find the wavelength of the wave. Let's take a look at the second harmonic and see how things change. Here's a picture of the second harmonic. And really the way I know that is there is two antinodes on this standing wave. And up here I put the formulas for the, the first harmonic because we're gonna start to see a pattern and we are gonna be able to see that pattern and really derive this L and wavelength formula for every single harmonic that there is. But once again, we look and we see that this is length L, and still from node to node is gonna be one half of a wavelength. So in the second harmonic, we can now say that L equals, now remember, like I said in the last one, the first number that goes here is what harmonic number that is, but by the picture, I look and I see that there is two antinodes. So now I could say that this picture, the length has two times one half of a wavelength. And wavelength is now gonna be equal to two over two L, which really wavelength is just L. So now in the second harmonic, if I was given for example, L equaled four meters, well now the wavelength of this wave is four meters. So now we can see in the second harmonic, we have L is equal to two times one half wavelength, and lambda equals L. I think it's gonna become pretty obvious this one, what's gonna happen with this L formula for a standing wave and the harmonics, but this one, let's take one more look at the third harmonic and see if we can see a pattern here. We're starting to see, and, and maybe you'll see it now, that L is equal to the n number times one half lambda. Now the good thing is we can just remember this and then solve for that. We don't really need to memorize the, the lambda pattern, but this is where we're gonna see where n is the harmonic number, aka how many antinodes there are, and lambda is the wavelength of the standing wave.
All right, so I'm going to set up the third harmonic, and then what I want you to do, pause the video or whatever you got to do, find an expression for L and lambda of the third harmonic. Here is what the harm, third harmonic would kind of look like. Remember, establish what your L is, how many A's you have, and how many wavelengths are in this picture to help you come up with an L and a wavelength formula. Pause the video, do that now, and then come back. We see that this is once again L, the length of the entire standing wave. This is not wavelength, this is the length of the entire wave, and we have three antinodes, which is going to tell us the harmonic number is going to be three. So they're not always going to tell you what the harmonic number is, they're just going to give you a diagram and have you have to solve for it. So once again, from here, now how many half of a wavelengths do we have? We have one of them here, we have another half of a wavelength here, and we have another half of a wavelength here. Now we can say that L is equal to three, our harmonic number, times one half wavelength. And we can now say lambda equals two thirds L. So this is the expression for the length and the wavelength of the third harmonic. And guys, you can do this for any number. Let's say it's the 15th harmonic and they want to know what is the wavelength if there's a 15 15th harmonic well we would say that the l has 15 antinodes and there's one half of a wavelength for each one of those right so if we want to just do a little bit more math we could say that l is going to be 15 over 2 lambda so then lambda is going to be 2 over 15 L. So if you're given L or you're given wavelength, you can find one of those two unknown variables. They're going to tell you the wavelength of the wave or they're going to tell you L and they're going to ask you to solve for the other one given any harmonic number and knowing this pattern. This pattern is not on your reference table. This L equals N one half wavelength. This is not on your reference table. You need to know how to derive that and like I said, you could do it by looking at the picture. How many half wavelengths are there? We know that the L has to be a certain amount of one half wavelengths. Depending on the harmonic number, that's gonna go in here. So as long as you find this L, you can do this and then you could derive for the wavelength or you can just memorize, it's really up to you, that the wavelength is gonna be two times L over whatever that harmonic number is. And we see that here, we see that here, so that's the pattern for the wavelength. So now I have these two patterns, L equals N, one half lambda, which gave me lambda equals 2L over N. Okay, now we also know another formula which is gonna help us solve for frequency. Because if we remember, this, is on, this formula right here is on our reference table, frequency wavelength. So I know that frequency is gonna be V divided by wavelength. So if I now want to find the frequency of a standing wave, I can now say F is equal to V divided by 2L over N. And when I clean this up, I can really say it's equal to V N over 2L. Guys, this formula right here is not on your reference table either. You have to be able to use the knowledge of this formula, which is on the reference table, and this relationship or pattern to derive that. And there's a vocabulary term, which I'm gonna use in the example that we're about to do. And when F is equal to N1, so the F for N1, okay, or the smallest harmonic number, we call this the fundamental frequency. So they are gonna ask for the fundamental frequencies of waves and you are gonna to have to solve for just N1, which is very easy to do, but you have to know what fundamental frequency means. Fundamental frequency is N equals one, or one antinode in the standing wave. So that's when N, that's when N equals one is gonna go into here. So let's just do a quick example using some actual numbers, and then I'll get you out of here. All right, so, and so in this example, it says a string with a length 12 meters that's fixed on both ends creates a standing wave with five total nodes. 
What is the harmonic number and the wavelength of the standing wave? So the first thing we could say is if you remember way back when that the anti-node number is one less than the node number. So, but that's something you have to memorize, so that might be hard. So if you do memorize that and you say there's node number equal to five, that means anti-node has to be equal to four, and we also know that the harmonic number equals the amount of antinodes. So this is actually the harmonic number right here. But now, like I said, that takes some memorization, so the other thing you could do is draw a picture. So that's two, and that would be two nodes, three nodes, right? We, have, we know that this is gonna bounce back and cause this. Then I do one more, that makes four nodes, and then I do one more, that makes five nodes. Here's gonna be my wall. It says it's fixed on both ends. And then here are gonna be the antinodes. Okay, so now it has A, 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 which is four antinodes just like we discussed. So now we also know that this L right here is equal to 12 meters. Now guys, it is perfectly acceptable for you to understand at this point that this right here is one wave and there's two total waves here, so yes, wavelength is gonna equal six meters. But when showing work, we kinda, we wanna prove it to ourselves. So let's go back to what we just discussed over the last 25 minutes or so. We see that L is gonna be equal to the harmonic number four times one half of the wavelength. So now, we know, also know that the wavelength is going to be equal to 2L over four, or one half L. So that makes things wonderful because now I can say this, and now I've proven the fact that it is in fact wavelength equal to six meters. And that's the types of questions that you're gonna see with these harmonic numbers using the relationship for L and for lambda to find frequency. And remember guys, the frequency, if they ask you to derive the frequency, NV over 2L, right? We know that the harmonic number here, well we solve for the wavelength, but the harmonic number here is gonna be four times V divided by two times 12. We don't know V in this case, all right, so we at least were able to set up an expression for this and say that F equals one sixth of V. All right guys, so that's how you look at the frequency. Hope this helped guys, I know this was a long one, skip back and forth, see what you need to see, go back and review what you need to review. On the next video, I'm gonna talk about these harmonic numbers inside tubes when it comes to sound, because sound's gonna be very different. Hope you have yourself an amazing day.